Hey, before we get started today, I wanted to remind you, we have a weekly newsletter that you can go sign up for today. Go to denisekylitz, spelled with an A, dot com, and sign up there. Talks about hair-related stuff, my favorite style of the week, a weekly nugget to get your weekend started. Just join our community. I would love to see you there. Thinning hair can be caused by various factors. One of the most common and the most probably significant factor is genetics. Men and women have different patterns of baldness. Men, you can see they have that receding hairline. Women tend to thin out on their part line. So this type of thinning is also known as androgenetic alopecia. It can result in gradual hair loss and thinning over time. Can you do anything about that? You can slow it down by using different shampoos, making sure that you're not using products that actually clog your hair follicle. Your hair follicle is actually that little hole in your scalp where your hair grows out of. Okay, number one, genetics. Number two, hormonal changes. As a woman, your hormones fluctuate many times throughout your lifetime. Puberty, pregnancy, menopause, but hormones in your body. Men have hormonal changes too, so don't get me wrong. Hormonal imbalances affect hair growth cycle, and this leads to shedding and reduced hair density. If you feel like you have a hormonal imbalance, get your blood work done, have your doctor check it out. Number three, age. As people age, their hair naturally becomes finer and it starts to thin. It's just due to the hair growth cycle. It's just a natural occurrence, decreased production of hair follicles. Now, can you do something about this? Absolutely. Using the correct shampoos, not using cheap products on your scalp, again, clogging the hair follicles. The fourth cause of thinning hair can be medical conditions. That can be thyroid disorders, autoimmune diseases, scalp infections, nutritional defects, deficiencies, and some chemotherapies or radiation therapy. Then the fifth one is lifestyle factors. Poor lifestyle choices such as excessive stress, improper nutrition, crash dieting, smoking, excessive hairstyling, or use of harsh hair products, and lack of proper hair care can weaken the hair shaft and disrupt the hair growth cycle, which leads to thinning hair. But one big reason for thinning hair is a hormone called DHT. DHT is something that your body makes. It's a hormone that happens in males mostly when they're going through puberty. But as you get older, it can cause problems with your hair and it messes up the way your hair grows and it makes your hair follicles smaller. And this means your hair gets thinner and falls out more easily. DHT basically makes your hair go through a cycle where it grows for less time, rests for more time and falls out quicker. Over time, this cycle can make your hair stop growing altogether in some places, resulting in alopecia or a receding hairline or thinning at the crown area. So to fight this, there's several treatments that stop your body from making too much DHT. They also give your hair and your scalp what they need to stay healthy and grow new hair. So we're gonna discuss some of the science behind losing your hair and what you can do about it. Research indicates that the primary reason behind most premature hair loss is a genetic sensitivity to DHT. DHT is known as androgenetic alopecia or pattern baldness. What exactly is DHT? DHT stands for dihydrotestosterone. Yes, it is a form of testosterone. And yes, women have testosterone too. This is a potent androgen hormone crucial for developing masculine characteristics during youth. In adults, genetic sensitivities to DHT can lead to undesirable effects such as pattern baldness. The enzyme 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone into DHT in various tissues, interrupting the natural hair growth cycle and follicle health. Okay, stay with me here. I know that's a mouthful, but Pretend like you have your 5-alpha reductase on one side, your testosterone on the other side. They're on this playground. And when they get together, they actually create DHT. We don't want that to happen. We want to build a fence in between the reductase and the testosterone so they can't form the DHT. The products that we want to use 
form this fence. Let's talk about the growth phase of your hair. And then we'll talk about how DHT goes into the growth state. First, you have the antigen phase, which is the growing phase of your hair. This is the active phase of hair growth, where your hair follicles are busy producing new hair. Your hair can grow about half an inch every month. This stage usually lasts for several years. Then we have the transition phase, which is called the catagen phase. During this phase, your hair follicles shrink and your hair growth slows down. And this usually just lasts for a few weeks. And then it goes into the resting phase or the telogen phase. This is where your hair follicles are at rest. No new growth occurs during this phase and your existing hair is just hanging out. And this phase lasts for a few months. And then we have the shedding phase, the exogen phase. This phase is often considered part of the telogen phase, the resting phase but it's the shedding phase and it's when your hair naturally sheds, making way for new hair to grow in the same hair follicle. So you have one hair follicle and only one hair could grow out of that hair follicle on your head at one time. Now shedding is just a normal process and most people lose around 50 to 100 hairs a day. That is normal activity. If it's more than that, if you have gobs, then that's when you become concerned. So after the shedding phase, this cycle repeats itself and new hair begins to grow from the follicles, starting the antigen phase all over again. DHT interrupts the natural cycle of the hair follicles by shortening the growth phase. It reduces the time available for your hair to grow. So more follicles transition to the resting phase where they're inactive and eventually shed. With fewer follicles entering the antigen phase and more entering the telogen phase or the resting phase, hair thinning and hair loss become more noticeable. As the DHT binds to the androgen receptors in the hair follicles, it causes them to shrink. What's an androgen receptor? If you think of a green onion growing in the ground, that's more like a hair bulb. Okay, so it's like that little tiny bulb under the dirt. You've got a little tiny bulb under your skin and that is your hair bulb. So when DHT gets in there, it binds to the receptors inside of your hair follicle and it causes that little hair ball to shrink. And this results in you producing thinner and weaker hair that's prone to breakage. So what you wanna do is use a product that inhibits this. Every time your hair goes through a cycle, it's affected by DHT. After every cycle, your follicles may become so tiny and inactive that they are unable to produce any new hair at all. And that's what leads to permanent hair loss. That's called follicle atrophy. That means that your hair follicle will not produce a new hair. And once that reaches atrophy, you can't grow any new hair. Have you ever seen a bald man and his sc scalp is really shiny? That real shiny area indicates that their hair follicles have shut down. However, if you catch this before that happens and you stop the DHT from getting in there and reducing your hair follicle and your hair bulb, you can actually grow healthier hair and it'll grow longer, meaning longer periods of time. So if you're genetically prone to lose your hair, you can hold this off. Maybe not forever, but maybe forever if you're using these products all the time over time and you catch it early enough. But even if you are in this stage and you're noticing that your hair is getting thinner, you can maybe not reverse it. It depends on what's happening. If it's genetic, you can't reverse what's already happened, but you can sure in the heck slow it down. Now, if it's caused by stress or nutrition or medication or something like that, you can definitely turn it around by using the right products. What can we do about it? Yes, we're gonna talk about 10 different products, but before we do that, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite product. And you guys know that I love Euphora products. My very favorite Euphora product is their thickening regime. It has not only helped me regrow my hair, it's helped a lot of my hair clients. Two of the products I really, really totally recommend. But if you want the full kit and caboodle, they sell it as a kit as well. Now, does it work overnight? Mm -mm. But it will work. It will work. The Euphora Thickening Regimen uses the latest in botanical and clinical hair science to promote 
healthy hair growth from the inside out without the use of pharmaceuticals. So what does it have that other products don't have? First of all, it has a pro-amino peptide complex, and then they use their aloe stem cell therapy. They work above and below the scalp surface to prevent the creation of DHT. And they also anchor the bulb of your hair to the scalp. It actually makes your bulb a little bit fatter. So then that way it doesn't fall out as easy. It reduces the shedding and it reduces follicle atrophy. Let's talk about the pro amino peptide complex. This helps create the optimal scalp environment for healthy hair growth. So what it does, it builds that fence. You've got the reductase on one side and the testosterone on the other side. The pro amino peptide is the fence. And then it also nourishes and protects the scalp. So this helps prevent that follicle atrophy we were talking about. It anchors the bulb to the scalp and it reduces sebum production. Also helps with that appearance of that shiny scalp. Now let's talk about the aloe stem cells. It's produced by activating the aloe plant's natural self-healing mechanisms, which then in turn offers a concentrated dose of active ingredients to the hair and the scalp. As you can see, there's a lot of science behind this and they have won awards for the science behind this. Let's talk about the five products that are in this system. First, you have your cleansing treatment, and this is basically a shampoo, and it creates optimal scalp environment. And then the conditioning treatment. This transforms fine limp hair into thicker looking hair with shine and softness. Then they have something called a thickening serum, and this is a lightweight styling solution that helps deliver the appearance of thicker, fuller hair. Now let's move on to the scalp treatment. This is the maximum dose of pro amino cell complex. This works above and below the scalp to nourish, protect, and deliver essential nutrients for healthy hair growth. And if you haven't guessed yet, just by what I just said, this is one of those products that I would highly recommend. And then they also have vitamins, the nutritional support that you can actually take and it gives you the right balance of nutrients. I don't know if you guessed it or not, what two products just by me describing them, I would probably recommend. It would be the cleansing treatment because to me that gets the DHT off your scalp and out of your hair. And of course the scalp treatment because it has the maximum dose of the pro amino cell complex. Yeah, those are the two I would recommend. There is a link in the show notes that goes to my website denisekylas.com and then it goes to where you can buy the Euphora products off my website and when you do that I actually get a little bit of commission from that it really helps me it helps my channel also it tells me if you've bought any of the products so I can reach out to you and say hey how'd you like it because I still love to be a hairstylist and recommend products to people now we're going to talk about some supplements for thinning hair and then we're going to talk about a few other products that you might consider using if you don't want to try Euphora products. Okay, so the three supplements that are often associated with thinning hair, vitamin D, this plays a crucial role in maintaining healthy hair and scalp. Studies have shown that low levels of vitamin D can contribute to female pattern baldness. The second supplement you want for thinning hair, biotin. So why is biotin so important? Biotin is a water-soluble B vitamin, also known as vitamin B7 or vitamin H, and it is essential for hair growth. Why is that? Because biotin increases circulation to the scalp, aiding in hair growth and preventing thinning. It's a crucial component of keratin, which is vital for hair, skin, and nails. Correcting a biotin deficiency can help treat hair loss and promote hair growth. Pumpkin seed oil. Scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth and aid those with thinning hair, pumpkin seed oil is a valuable supplement ingredient. It's known to be effective on its own or as part of a supplement blend. In comparison to other supplements like collagen, elastin, and coconut oil, pumpkin seed oil may offer more significant benefits for hair health. In conclusion to the supplements, I want you to make sure that it is crucial to consult your doctor or a dermatologist to find the best solution for your thinning hair. We're gonna move on to different shampoos. One that you've probably heard of is Nioxin, and it is known for its three-part system designed to promote thicker and fuller hair. Another one, Regenapure DR Shampoo. 
This features the ketoconazole, which is an antifungal agent. Sorry, I can't pronounce that very well. And it's a DHT blocking ingredient. I did not know that that ingredient was a DHT blocking ingredient. Because the reason why I'm saying that is because Nizerol has that ingredient in there. Nizerol, I've recommended that to a lot of people who have dermatitis or some form of psoriasis on their scalp because it really does work. And I use that a lot too. I just didn't realize it was a DHT blocking ingredient. It actually helps with dandruff and hair thinning. So if you can't find this Regenapure DR shampoo, you can probably find the Nizerol. You can get that at Walmart, Target, CVS, wherever you buy your shampoo. Another one is Ultrax Labs Hair Surge. It actually has caffeine in this shampoo. So it helps to stimulate hair follicles, promoting healthier and thicker hair over time. It boosts the blood circulation in your scalp. Caffeine infused formula kind of makes me think, I don't know, it's kind of like those lip plumpers that has peppermint oil in them. It's like, come on, all you're doing is feeling it. I don't know though, I could be wrong. <laughs> if you want to try it, try it. But it doesn't say anything that it blocks DHT or anything. Revita Hair Stimulating Shampoo. I have a list of 10. I'm not going to go through all of them. I might put them in my show notes in case you want them. But Revita Hair Stimulating Shampoo. This has the ketoco... Why can't I say that? Because it's a long word and I am not scientific -y. So ketoconazole. That's that same one that that other one had that's great for dandruff, psoriasis, things like that. Has that ingredient, it has caffeine, and it has other active ingredients. So it promotes hair growth, reduces inflammation, and improves overall hair health. Makes it a comprehensive solution for hair thinning. I'll tell you, this might be one that I would like to try. Avalon Organics Biotin B-Complex Thickening Shampoo. Whoa, that is a mouthful. It's emphasizing biotin. So it has a lot of biotin in it. Now, I don't know how biotin can actually absorb into your skin to help promote hair growth, but I'm sure the scientists behind this know a lot more than I do. Here's one that you might be familiar with. Paul Mitchell Tea Tree Scalp Care Anti-Thinning Root Lift Foam. Unlike traditional shampoos, this foam visually boosts hair thickness by adding volume and lift at the roots, enriched with tea tree oil for a healthy scalp. I don't know if that's a shampoo or not. It sounds like it's a mousse. I could be wrong because I don't use Paul Mitchell products, but it's very popular and it's easy to find. Here's my last one I'm going to share with you. The Kerastase Densifique, Bane Densite Shampoo. Why do people try to get so fancy with their names of their shampoos? It's a Kerastase shampoo and it's crafted for thinning hair. It adds density and body to the hair, plumping and strengthening individual hair fibers for visibly thicker and fuller looking locks. That's a few shampoos. I do have a list of 10. I will put them in my show notes. I just didn't want to bore you to death with descriptions of shampoo. But when you are selecting a shampoo for thinning hair, consider the key factors like the ingredients. If they have a DHT blocker, which I would highly recommend you get one with a DHT blocker. See if they have some kind of scalp circulation stimulation. Make sure they're sulfate free. Make sure they have some moisture to them. Make sure the pH balance is there. Make sure they have clinical studies that back all this up. Look at the user reviews. Make sure that it doesn't have any harmful additives. Make sure it's good for your hair type. And remember that it takes consistency and patience. With any of these, I would give it a good three months before you see any results. I would take a before picture before you start using them. And then maybe every 30 days, take another picture just to remind yourself and just to see if it's working. And remember, always consult with your healthcare professional or a dermatologist for personalized advice tailored to your specific hair care needs, okay? All I know is I research products, I use products, I love hair, and I love talking about hair. If you need more information, reach out. I can guide you. And until next time, Remember, when you know better, you do better. And go out and make it a great week.